House briefing room. We are waiting for Press Secretary Jay Carney, and we don't know who else, uh, to talk to us a little bit about uh, the president's decision not to release the photos of Osama bin Laden's body. Uh, that decision just came to us uh, a short time ago. We announced it here on CNN. Uh, we are curious what the thinking was behind that. We certainly know that the president had a lot of people in his ear uh, telling him uh, one way or the other what to do about those photos. So we hope to learn much more about uh, how he came to the decision not to release the photos. We'll keep an eye on that podium. And as soon as that White House briefing gets underway, we will bring it to you live right here on CNN. Meanwhile, it's time now for a CNN political update. CNN Deputy Political Director Paul Steinhauser joins me now from Washington. And Paul, uh, new CNN polling shows that a majority of Americans may not agree with the president's decision uh, announced just a short time ago not to release these bin Laden photos. Yeah, let's take a look at these numbers. This is from our national poll. We did it Monday, and now it was the day after the announcement on Bin Laden's death. And look at that right there. 56% say they would like to see the photographs. Only 39% say no, that uh, the U.S. government should not be releasing a photograph of Bin Laden's body. And, and Randy, what's interesting as well, more men than women say they would like to have seen the release of a photograph. Randy? And Paul, what do Americans think uh, about the killing of Bin Laden in general? Do you have any numbers on that one? Yeah, overall, most, most Americans think this is a, a, a major achievement. You can look right here, two-thirds, 67% say yes, this is a major achievement for the United States. But here's the flip side to this. Take a look at the next number. Does the, Bin Laden's death actually eliminate al-Qaeda as a terrorist threat to the United States? And you can see right there, Americans do not feel that way. He may be gone. They still worry. They are still concerned about a threat from al-Qaeda. Randy? Mm. One day, it certainly would be nice to see that number go down, wouldn't it? All mm, right, Paul Steinhauser yes. in Washington for us. Thank you, Paul. We begin this hour with the latest development in the death of Osama bin Laden. The Obama administration tells CNN that the White House has decided not to release the death photos of bin Laden. An official says that decision was made by the president. We expect to hear a whole lot more about it in the White House briefing, which is expected to start any moment. We are keeping a very close eye on that podium. We want to hear how the president came to this decision, especially given that yesterday, just yesterday, CIA Director Leon Panetta had said that he expected those photos will be released. So uh, reaction to the president's decision is certainly starting to come in to CNN. Uh, moments ago, we heard from Rep. Steny Hoyer. Listen to this. I share the president's view. Uh, in my opinion, there's, there's, there's no uh, there's no end served by releasing a picture uh, uh, of uh, uh, someone who has been uh, killed. Uh, and uh, uh, I think there's absolute proof that Osama bin Laden was, in fact, the person uh, that was uh, uh, taken into custody, was, was killed in the process, uh, in the firefight. Uh, but I don't think there's any necessity to release a picture. So, of course, we want to know what the White House has to say about that. Once again, we have a live picture ready to go for you as soon as that briefing starts in the White House briefing room. Uh, originally, it was supposed to start at 1.30. Then we were told between 1.30 and 2. So it should be getting underway uh, any moment now. We want to hear what they have to say because uh, certainly we know that, uh, according to the White House, that uh, bin Laden had been identified by facial recognition, by DNA, by one of his wives who was in the compound in Pakistan. And now this, the president's decision not to release uh, the death photos of Osama bin Laden. So we will find out exactly what is behind that and bring it to you as soon as that briefing gets underway. We also have new details about the night the raid went down. In Pakistan, a senior intelligence source says one of bin Laden's daughters says she saw him being shot and killed by U.S. forces. The daughter was one of eight or nine children left behind in the compound in Abdabad after the raid. Among two or three women being questioned is one who's believed to be bin Laden's wife. As for those who died, Pakistani intel sources say that in addition to bin Laden, his son and three other men were killed. The White House had said that three men and one woman had been killed. Bin Laden also had about $745 in cash and two telephone numbers sewn into his clothing when he was killed. In another development, the U.S. is demanding Pakistan explain what it knew and did not know about bin Laden's location. CIA Director Leon Panetta means no words in a closed briefing on Capitol Hill, telling lawmakers that either they, meaning Pakistan, were involved or incompetent. Neither place is a good place to be. A senior Pakistani intelligence official has reacted angrily to Panetta and other U.S. officials who have asserted 
that Pakistan's leaders must have known about bin Laden's whereabouts. He says, quote, what worse statement can come than that we heard from Panetta? I'm afraid this statement is totally regrettable. For more on the Pakistani reaction to all of this, Nick Robertson joins us in Abdabad, Pakistan, the site of bin Laden's compound. Nick, what have you been hearing from the Pakistanis? Any reaction there uh, at this late hour to the decision by the president not to release these photos yet? I think it's going to cause some consternation here. I was talking to the head of the Bar Association here in this city, a city of half a million people. Uh, he said four to five hundred lawyers have been demonstrating today against the attack on the compound here. And they don't believe, the lawyers don't believe, he said that uh, Bin Laden was living there. And the one thing that he said would change his mind and change the mind of the lawyers and of other people in this city, he said, would be photographic evidence. And this was several hours before we heard that President Obama's not going to release a photograph. So for the lawyers here, a trained professional class of people, they want to see a photograph. For them, they need a photograph because they still don't believe that bin Laden was here. They believe that this is a fabrication of the United States to prove President and Obama's poll ratings ahead of elections. They believe that this is a fabrication on the part of their own government for their own political leaders' uh, self-aggrandizement and, and to further their, their political positions as well. So uh, it's clear that the, the photograph is a very important issue to some people. It's quite obvious also that, it, that, that for some critics, it's not going to matter what you put out. You could put out a photograph of bin Laden and the critics would say, well, he's not really dead. This is a doctor photograph of when he was alive, uh, somebody has photoshopped it or whatever. So uh, there's, certainly, uh, there's certainly a risk uh, with putting anything out that some people won't believe it at all, but at least the lawyers here say if they see a photograph, they will believe it, uh, and they're an influential class of people in this city. And Nick, how, do you, how do you expect the Taliban to react to this? I think we're going to see from the Taliban, they've been sort of relatively pragmatic on it so far. They, they've said uh, variously, don't jump to conclusions, wait till we get more information before you make your reactions. Um, and it seems that, uh, that they are at least are perhaps more in tune with their, uh, with their sort of base supporters, if you will, and they're, they're willing to accept and believe that potentially has been killed. But like all of these groups, they're going to, they're going to want to have proof. And we've heard from some radicals who said, uh, again, that they don't believe bin Laden is dead. They think that he's still alive, that he's still out there fighting, that he never would have been killed. So I think there's always going to be those skeptics, but I think some of the Taliban at least are prepared to accept that this has happened, but they're still analyzing the information they have available. Anyone involved in this, whether it's the top leadership in Pakistan, whether it's the Taliban here, knows that there are political advantages and disadvantages to the way they play this particular situation. They cannot be wrong-footed, they cannot be caught out, but they will play it to their own advantage. They have constituencies, and they're going to play it to the best of their ability here, Randy. All right, Nick Robertson, thank you for your insight, as always, there in Pakistan for us. And I want to remind our viewers at home that we are still waiting for the White House briefing to get underway. Once again, we'll keep showing you that, uh, that podium there until Jay Carney, the press secretary, decides to come out and uh, let us know the very latest on this decision. Uh, as you know, we've told you there's, but there was uh, quite a bit of concern about uh, whether or not to release these photos of uh, bin Laden after death. Um, there was some concern by the president that it may incite violence, certainly violence against our troops. Uh, possibly it might send the wrong message. Certainly didn't want to appear celebratory uh, here in the United States. So it would be interesting to see exactly what uh, Press Secretary Jay Carney uh, tells reporters when he does take that podium. And you will hear it right here on CNN because we will bring it to you live as soon as it gets underway. Meanwhile, they are the elite of the elite, and they took down the world's most wanted man. Well, in two minutes, just who are these guys? We'll look at what it takes to be part of this Navy SEAL special team. Uh, welcome back. You can see there the uh, White House briefing room. We are expecting a briefing by Press Secretary Jay Carney. You can see it's getting a little bit crowded there. Folks are abuzz with the news that the president will not be releasing the photos of Osama bin Laden's body. And we have a little more new information to tell you about what went into that decision as we continue to keep an eye on this podium. Uh, our White House correspondent Ed Henry telling us uh, that a senior Democratic official close to the White House says flatly the president was never in favor of releasing these photos. 
photos. Officials say the president uh, felt releasing the pictures would be over the top, uh, given the fact that so few credible people have questioned the death and the lonely conspiracy theorists would never be satisfied. Uh, this again coming to us uh, from the White House through our Ed Henry. This official apparently said the president has been getting private support in this position from both Secretary Gates and Secretary Clinton. And the official also uh, saying that the president's inner circle was not thrilled with what this source described to our Ed Henry as CIA Director Leon Panetta's I'm in charge moments late yesterday. Uh, just a reminder here, you may recall that uh, CIA Director Leon Panetta said yesterday that he thought the photos should be released and he fully expected that they would be released. Meanwhile, we knew that Secretary Clinton, uh, as well as Defense Secretary Robert Gates, were both in the president's ear telling him not to release the photos. So that's why we're keeping a very close eye on this podium here in the White House briefing room to see exactly how this all went down. But uh, that is just a little bit of insight into the president's uh, decision-making process from our Ed Henry there working his sources at the White House. Well, we all want to know more about the Navy SEALs credited with killing Osama bin Laden in Pakistan. To understand who they are, let's break down for you how one becomes a SEAL. First, you have to pass a pretty intense test before ever starting your training. Take a look. To meet the minimum requirements to begin training in Coronado, California, you must swim 500 yards in 12 minutes and 30 seconds, do 42 push-ups in two minutes, and then 50 sit-ups in another two minutes. Then do six pull-ups and run one and a half miles in 11 minutes. I'm tired just thinking about that. Do you think you could do all that? Well, if you pass, then you start Basic Underwater Demolition School, or BUDS as they call it, which has been called the toughest training in the world. Months of sheer hell is how it's described. In total, SEALs train between 18 and 24 months, with the pinnacle of training coming during what is not surprisingly called Hell Week. Five days in which trainees are constantly cold, they're hungry, they're sleep deprived, and yes, they are wet as well. It's designed to push a man, as you can imagine, past his breaking point, and recruits sleep a total, get this, of just four hours maximum over the entire five days. Most recruits, not surprisingly, drop out long before this because they just can't take the training, which involves running 15 miles, topped with a two-mile open water swim, and other intense physical conditioning. The Navy says a SEAL can fire more ammo in one training session than some troops do their entire careers. Now, historically, 75% of those who start this training never finish it. But the success rate, turns out, is actually rising. That's in large part because the SEALs are targeting men more likely to succeed. Unconventional athletes, say like water polo players, there are no women in the SEALs, in case you were wondering, and most SEALs are white, though according to the Washington Post, the SEALs have stepped up efforts to increase the number of minorities in their ranks. There are fewer than 2,600 SEALs in the world. And these guys, well, you know, they're not, they're not really your action hero wannabes, according to a former SEAL. The guys who don't make it through training are the Rambo wannabes. Those are the guys that don't make it. If you cannot work in a team format but also function autonomously, you won't last for very long. He says, Getting on this special team means you've established yourself as a mature and steady operator with a real-world track record of high-stakes, sensitive missions. So there you have it, a picture of the Navy SEALs. We wanted to uh, just bring your attention once again to uh, the podium there at the White House briefing room in Washington, D.C. We're keeping an eye on it. We're waiting for that briefing to get underway. Reporters are gathering there, of course. We want to hear more about what went into the decision by the president, which we just told you a short time ago. He does not plan to release the photos of Osama bin Laden's body, not the photos that were taken at the compound, nor the photos uh, of the burial at sea. So we will see exactly uh, how that decision was made. We'll take a quick break, and as soon as that briefing starts, we'll bring it to you. And once again, you can see more folks uh, gathering there, more members of the media. Uh, we are told that this briefing really should start uh, any moment now. Uh, that is the door where Press Secretary Jay Carney will be entering from. Uh, we hope to get more detail about the president's decision uh, and some of the back and forth that went on there at the White House uh, when, it come, when it comes to the decision not to release uh, the photos of Osama bin Laden after he was killed by the Navy SEALs at that Pakistan compound where he'd been living. Uh, so once that briefing gets underway, 
Uh, we have one eye on that and one eye on some other news that we're covering as well. So we'll bring that to you as soon as it starts. Uh, once again, uh, everybody getting in their seats there. So we do expect it to start really any moment now. So uh, in the meantime, though, we'll take a quick check of some other top stories. A 22-hour telethon underway in Alabama right now to help victims of the largest tornado outbreak in U.S. history. The National Weather Service confirms at least 178 tornadoes touched down last week across the south, surpassing the previous record from April 1974. That number could still rise as additional surveys are completed. Alabama was the hardest hit state. News that broke just a short time ago, we've been telling you the Obama administration has decided against releasing photos of Osama bin Laden's body as evidence of his death. That's according to administration officials briefed by the White House. A CNN opinion research poll shows 56% of Americans think the government should release those photos. Tomorrow, President Obama will be in New York for a wreath-laying ceremony at the 9-11 Memorial. He also plans to meet privately with first responders and 9-11 family members. 2,976 people were killed in the 9-11 attacks nearly 10 years ago. Of course, we want to take you back now to the White House briefing room. We're waiting for uh, Jay Carney, the press secretary, to tell us exactly uh, the, the details that went into the thinking of the president's decision not to release the photos. Our Ed Henry has been gathering some interesting information uh, from his sources uh, as we await this. Uh, I can tell you that a uh, senior Democratic official telling our Ed Henry uh, that, uh, that the president was never in favor of releasing uh, these photos of Osama bin Laden, uh, saying that the president felt that releasing the pictures would be over the top, given the fact that so few credible people have actually questioned the death and the lonely conspiracy theorists would actually never be satisfied, was the official stance of the White House. Of course, we're hoping to get more on that uh, when this briefing gets underway. The official apparently said that the president has been getting private support in this position, not only from Secretary of State Hillary Clinton, but also from Defense Secretary Robert Gates. And here's what's interesting. Uh, our Ed Henry was told, uh, the official from the White House, saying that the president's inner circle was not thrilled with uh, what this source described as a CIA director, uh, Leon Panetta, I'm in charge here moments uh, late yesterday. We know that uh, Panetta had said yesterday that he did expect uh, the photos to be released. So here we have uh, Jay Carney approaching the podium, and I'm sure he'll tell us exactly why the president has decided against that. So finally, let's listen in to what he has to say. <clears throat> okay. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, before uh, I take your questions, I'd just like to uh, say to you uh, that the president has made the decision not to release any of the photographs of uh, the deceased Osama bin Laden. And rather than, uh, uh, or rather, first, uh, I will uh, give you the language the president used when he was recently interviewed uh, about an hour ago to explain his decision. Uh, this is in an inter interview with uh, CBS 60 Minutes, Steve Croft. The, uh, the president was asked, uh, well, he said that uh, they were discussing when bin Laden's body was taken out of the compound, uh, the president was asked about how they knew it was him. And he said, when they landed, we had very strong confirmation at that point that it was him. Photographs had been taken. Facial analysis indicated that, in fact, it was him. We hadn't yet, d d yet done DNA testing. But at that point, we were 95% sure. Question, did you see the pictures? The president, yes. Question, what was your reaction when you saw them? The president, it was him. Question, why didn't you release them? The president, we discussed this internally. Keep in mind that we are absolutely certain that this was him. We've done DNA sampling and testing, and so there is no doubt that we killed Osama bin Laden. It is important for us to make sure that very graphic photos of somebody who was shot in the head are not floating around as an incitement to additional violence or as a propaganda tool. That's not who we are. We don't trot out this stuff as trophies. The fact of the matter is, this was somebody who was deserving of the, of the justice that he received. And I think Americans and people around the world are glad that he is gone. 
but we don't need to spike the football. And I think that given the graphic nature of these photos, it would create some national security risk. And I've discussed this with Bob Gates and Hillary Clinton and my intelligence teams, and they all agree. Question, there are people in Pakistan, for example, who say, look, this is all a lie. Obama, this is another American trick. Osama is not dead, the president. The truth is that we were monitoring world, that we are monitoring, we were monitoring, rather, worldwide reaction. There is no doubt that Osama, that, that bin Laden is dead. Certainly, there is doubt, no doubt among al-Qaeda members that he is dead. And so we don't think that a photograph in and of itself is going to make any difference. There are going to be some folks who deny it. The fact of the matter is, you will not see bin Laden walking on this earth again. That's the uh, conclusion of the excerpt. And I think uh, states rather uh, thoroughly why the president made the decision that he did. Uh, with that, I'll take your questions. Thanks. Thanks, Jay. Based on those comments, the president made uh, a very compelling case why not to release the photos. Uh, so what was the internal debate, and was he ever seriously considering releasing photos? Well, uh, obviously the photos didn't exist until bin Laden was killed. So there's not a great deal of time between then and the decision. There are obviously arguments to be made on either side. The, the fact of the matter is, as the president described, these are graphic photographs of someone who was shot in the face, or the head, rather. And uh, it is not in our national security interests to uh, allow those images, as has been in the past, uh, been the case, to become uh, uh, icons for to, to rally opinion against the United States. The president's number one priority is the safety and security of American citizens at home and Americans abroad. Uh, there is no need to release these photographs to establish Osama bin Laden's identity. Uh, and he saw uh, no other compelling reason to release them given the potential for national security risks, and, 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 and further, because he believes, as he said so clearly, this is not who we are. So was he, in the, in the time period you're discussing, the moment he had the photos until now that we know the answer, was he grappling with this at all, or was his stand clear and he was just gathering other, uh, uh, other opinions? Well, I, I, I don't know about the evolution of his decision-making process. When I've heard him discuss it, he held this opinion very firmly. Uh, and he has held that opinion very firmly. But this is a very short period of time. Uh, obviously, he wanted to hear the opinions of others. Uh, but he was uh, uh, very clear about his view on this. And obviously, uh, his decision is uh, categorical. One other question. Uh, Director Panetta, in one of the interviews he did yesterday, said the government obviously has been talking about how best to do this. But I don't think there's, there was any question that ultimately a photograph would be presented to the public. Well, How do you explain What that? I would say is that there are compelling arguments for, in general, the release of information. Uh, and, and, you know, there's a discussion to be had about the pros and cons. And the president engaged in that discussion and made a decision. Uh, the, every member of the national security team is, uh, is aware of and expressed the downside of releasing, which is, uh, I think, weighed heavily on the president. Uh, in terms of the potential risks it would pose to Americans serving abroad uh, and Americans traveling abroad. So uh, the idea that uh, this was 100% uh, obvious, I mean, yeah, that's the, the fact of the matter is the president never gets to make a decision that's 100% uh, uh, obvious because the, those kind of decisions never get to his desk. Well, that I understand, but I'm saying his, his comment was well, there, was no, there was no question that a photograph would leave. Obviously, well, that's look, wrong. I, the, the, right. the thing is the president made this decision. Uh, he consulted members of his national security team. Uh, there's reasonable arguments to be made. Uh, the president felt very strongly uh, and uh, made the decision he made. Yes. Jay, you talked yesterday a lot about the firefight. Who was it that was shooting back at the U.S. commandos? Uh, we have, as you know, since the moment this operation became public, uh, been as uh, helpful as we can be to provide as much information as we can. And in terms of the operational details, we have gotten to the 
point where we cannot cross lines because of the necessity for uh, to preserving the methods and, and operational techniques and, and uh, capabilities of the kinds of forces that were used in this case. Uh, we, we, you know, we, 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 we've gone to the limit of our ability to do that uh, and still maintain some of the things we need to maintain and be kept secret. So uh, that's a long way of uh, beginning my answer to say that we've re revealed a lot of information. We've been as forthcoming with facts as we can be. A lot of information came out quickly when we needed to clarify some of the information that we had. As more information came in, we've provided that. Uh, but in terms of further details of the operation, uh, you know, I'm, I don't have any for you. Uh, you're welcome to obviously uh, consult with the Defense Department about them, but I don't have any more information. I'm not going to discuss uh, beyond what I've said already, uh, the uh, the operational details. But some things, as you acknowledged yesterday, have changed as the information came in. Is the fact of a firefight so you, you heard the uh, account that I read yesterday, and uh, that is information that I provided. And I'm not. I'm just simply saying I'm not going further than that. I guess I'm just curious about, you mentioned I'm not going to go further than what I said yesterday. So we can talk about, we can ask a lot about operational details. The, the answer to your question is certainly contained within the account I read yesterday. But we're, we're at a point where uh, we need to be mindful of the necessity to protect our ability in the future to go after other bad guys, uh, perhaps in the same way we went after this one. And uh, some of the capacities that we have, the methods that we use, uh, need to be protected and not compromised. Let me ask one follow-up question. Are you concerned that the way in which bin Laden was killed and buried at sea might hurt the president's ability to reach out to the Muslim world, as he has tried to over the last two years? The, ma the efforts that were made to give Osama bin Laden an appropriate burial, following Islamic precepts and traditions, were considerable. However, I would also say that uh, there is nothing, um, the, the respect that was shown to him and his body uh, was far greater than the respect that Osama bin Laden showed to the victims on 9-11 or any of his other victims. Uh, and that's because that's who we are. Uh, so we feel very comfortable with the fact that we uh, took uh, extraordinary measures to, to show that respect uh, to the traditions of the Islamic faith. My question is about the president's specific outreach to the Muslim world. How does I think that you heard the president speak on Sunday evening about the unbelievably important fact to make clear that President Bush made clear before President Obama that the, our efforts in the fight against terrorists, against Al Qaeda, are not aimed at Islam, are not aimed at Muslims. And uh, the fact is that the cooperation and assistance provided by Muslims around the world is essential to our fight. And it's not about them because Osama bin Laden was not a Muslim leader, he was a mass murderer. A mass murderer of people around the world, including Muslims. Uh, so we, we obviously uh, believe that uh, we were uh, absolutely within our rights to go after the most wanted man in the world, the most wanted terrorist in the world, the man who uh, ordered the attacks on so many Americans and killed so many Americans. And, uh, and we, uh, it needs to be recognized that this is seen as a good thing throughout the world. Uh, and yet, because of who we are, we, we, we took extraordinary measures to, to show the kind of respect uh, that was shown uh, in his burial. Yes, Jay. What do you say to the um, families of the victims of 9-11 and the USS Cole and, and other uh, terrorist acts by Al-Qaeda? These family members say they want the photo released so they can have some closure. What's the White House response? Well, I, I, I'm not going to go beyond the, the words of the president, and, and I will rephrase them to say that there is no question at all that Osama bin Laden is dead. He will not walk this earth again. We have established beyond any doubt, through DNA evidence, facial recognition, visual recognition, the naming of him by individuals on that compound, 
that Osama bin Laden was shot and killed on Sunday night. He is dead. And that, I think, Americans uh, feel a great sense of closure because of that. Is there any other, I understand the photographs are off the table, are, is there any other evidence of his death that might, that you're still considering releasing, the president's still considering releasing, whether the video of uh, his burial at sea, whether the DNA evidence, is there anything else uh, that could be released? Well, I, I will simply say that we are, that this decision applies to all visual uh, evidence, um, and in terms of uh, discussions that might be had to go into more detail about how the DNA evidence uh, was uh, uh, analyzed and collected, how the facial recognition uh, evidence was analyzed and collected, and how uh, the experts uh, reached their conclusion that this was without any shred of doubt Osama bin Laden. You know, those, I'm sure that uh, information can, you know, might be made available, will be made available. Uh, in the future, but the uh, but this this decision that I cited that the president made has to do with the uh, visual evidence, the photographic ed evidence. Uh, and lastly, um, uh, the CIA director uh, Leon Panetta said uh, in a closed door briefing on Capitol Hill um, about the Pakistani government uh, that they either were involved or are incompetent. Uh, is that the position of the White House? I assume you mean by a closed door briefing, classified briefing. I have no comment. <laughs> okay. Jeff. Jeff. Oh, sorry, yeah. Um, if, uh, I just want to clarify. You said that the president, based on your observations, had always held the position that these photos should not well, be Well, I don't released. know. I just meant that uh, we're, we're now two and a half days since this took place. Uh, that uh, I, I know he had this. Uh, I heard him express this view yesterday. Uh, but there was still, he was gathering. Uh, the thoughts and, and views of others uh, on his team. Um, I, so long held is an impossible statement to make since we're only talking about but a couple sense of that days. But he had made up his mind and wanted just to open it up for opinions to sway him as to whether or not they should be released? The president has a national security team, and he wanted to hear uh, uh, the, the, the opinions of others, obviously. Uh, that's, that's how he makes decisions uh, in this White House, and he wants to hear, uh, as he did with the decision to authorize this mission, which I think has been reported was not uh, uh, a decision that uh, every member of his team supported or thought was, you know, that, that people had reservations, obviously, because it was a very risky mission. But he, you know, this is the process that he undertakes because he believes that that's the way uh, he wants his presidency to function. He wants uh, the unvarnished opinions and advice and assessments of his, of his top advisors. And in a situation like this, uh, the last thing he wants is a bunch of people telling him what they think he wants to hear. Can you give us a sense of whether or not it was the majority opinion of those who were giving him advice that the photos should not be released? It was a majority opinion, yes. And also, um, can you give us anything more about this uh, team that will be going to, I guess, brief former President Bush? I don't have any information on that. Yes, Chip. Uh, thanks, Jay. Um, I know you said you didn't want to get into operational details, but you kind of opened the but door. But you can on, try. But you kind of opened the door on one thing. You said that he was shot in the face, and then you corrected yourself and said, "Rather the head." Were you saying that he was not shot in the face? No, no. I, I simply, <laughs> I, he was uh, shot above the neck. Let's say that. No, I think we'd rather go with head if we're, if we're given the choice. But, but you're not saying it wasn't. I, I'm not. I don't have any details to give you on that. Um, why has the president uh, decided not to speak at Ground Zero this tomorrow? The president thinks it's uh, entirely fitting and appropriate to visit the site of uh, Ground Zero uh, in the wake of this significant and cathartic moment for the American people. And he wants to lay a wreath to honor the victims, to honor the first responders who so courageously rushed to the scene and, in many cases, gave their own lives uh, to try to save others, uh, to honor the, honor the spirit of unity of, uh, in America that we all felt in the wake of that terrible attack. Um, I think the power of that uh, requires no words. And uh, he will also meet with uh, families of the victims and, and first responders uh, in private. 
Was there a debate on whether to speak and uh, to use his expression? Was there concern that it don't, would look like spiking the ball? The president, no, there wasn't a debate, but the president did speak uh, on Sunday night. And a remarkably large audience in this country, a remarkable number of Americans saw him speak uh, because the word traveled so fast about this uh, monumental event that had occurred. Uh, and so, no, there was no debate. Okay, quick question on the New York Times uh, CBS poll. Um, his approval rating jumped 11 points from 46 to 57, but at the same time, his approval on the economy is the lowest ever in this poll, 34 percent. If you could just uh, comment on if you think there's any significance to all that. I think that the country is still uh, emerging from the worst recession since the Great Depression. I think that uh, gas prices have weighed heavily on Americans as they try to make ends meet, and it's entirely understandable why uh, that sentiment is out there because people are struggling, and people, in the case of uh, in the case of how they're dealing with these high gas gas prices, uh, are suffering. So that's uh, we we are fully aware of that, and that's why this president, uh, I think, you will see, um, will continue his focus on growing the economy, creating jobs, on, on working with Congress to pass legislation that does that, working with Congress to take measures that reduce our deficit, uh, that invest in uh, those areas that allow us to grow, allow us to compete, uh, make sure that we educate our kids so we can be competitive in the 21st century. He doesn't, I mean, the remarkable thing to me at watching, being on the inside now, is they've, they've, you always hear this, right, is that the train never stops, the speed, the, the rapidity of of uh, events and and the demands are so great and what what you know we've seen in these historic times since uh, the president came into office is that that is that has been the case uh, and then some and uh, his focus on the economy has not wavered even as he has dealt very quietly uh, with only a select number of people with this mission and its uh, f from its inception to its execution and he that focus will continue it's uh, uh, there's no, you know, the, the two things that he thinks about the most are the security of the American people and the economic security of the American people and, and at the same time. And so that's, uh, the economy uh, continues to be a, a major priority. Yes, yeah, we're Mike. hearing more and more lawmakers are seeing the Bin Laden photo or photos. Um, to be clear, are they just being shown the photos or are there copies floating around the hill? Uh, I'm not aware of uh, any photos being floating or being shown. Um, bin Laden, uh, Sunday when the raid happened, was there any opportunity for U.S. officials to question him before he was shot? Again, I'm not going to get into operational details about any beyond what we've done. I mean, what I've said in the past uh, uh, yesterday is, uh, is is what I would say today. So. Um, you know, what happened on Sunday night is that uh, an incredibly courageous team of U.S. personnel uh, entered a foreign country in darkness on an incredibly risky mission, uh, executed it with, at, at great risk to their own personal safety, uh, with, uh, executed that mission with great professionalism uh, and accomplished a goal that this country had sought for nine and a half years um, in a mission that uh, dramatically minimized collateral damage and uh, civilian casualties uh, that was pulled off without any uh, casualties among American personnel. Um, and it resulted in the bringing to justice of Osama bin Laden. Uh, we have an enormous regard for uh, what was accomplished on Sunday by those men. Oh, they're American heroes. I just didn't know if they got a question. Again, I, I would just refer for uh, those questions to the Defense Department. Last question real fast. Uh, any attempt by American officials to interview, question bin Laden's wife who was there at the scene? Uh, I, not that I'm uh, aware of, but uh, you, you might uh, ask the State Department that. Yeah. Uh, are there any U.S. officials involved in the questioning of anybody else at that compound? I think I mean, that, that goes to that, I think, what Mike just asked. And I, I, 
I don't have an answer. Uh, so we obviously cooperate uh, and have a, uh, an important relationship with Pakistan and with the Pakistani government. Uh, but I don't have any information uh, with which to answer that question. Are they, are they sending briefings of their Again, I don't. I, I just don't know. So uh, I, I don't have an answer. Is there going to be an updated narrative on what you read yesterday? I think I, I you know, I made pretty clear that we uh, have provided a great deal of information and have made an effort to get that information to you very quickly. Uh, the, the nature of this operation uh, and, the, and the rapidity with which we tried to respond to the desire for, understandable desire for information about it has, you know, meant that we uh, needed to clarify some facts. Uh, but we, I don't have any more operational details for you. Clarifying? Well, I don't, any, final, I don't have any. I don't have any. I don't have any more operational details for you. And this is final. Will we have any? I, again, you know, the. I don't draw any lines like that. It would be foolish to. But I don't. You know, we don't have any information for you today. Uh, I think we've provided a great deal of information for you about that operation. The. Uh, our focus, and I think most people's focus, is on, uh, the remarkable nature of what was accomplished, the fact that it was done uh, with uh, no American casualties and uh, very limited uh, collateral damage, and, uh, and done in a way that we could be entirely sure that Osama bin Laden had been brought to justice. Okay. One more, and I want to follow up, actually, one more on the, uh, on the issue of 9-11 of uh, families. Given that many members of Congress are being shown this photo, uh, if they ask to see the photo un under some circumstance that would not be public, but for them, if, if they ask for that opportunity, would the administration be open to giving them that opportunity? I don't. I don't have an answer to that right now. Um, let me get a chair. Yeah. I spoke on, I believe it was Monday, with the chairman of the 9/11 Commission. He said one of the glaring recommendations that hasn't been implemented yet is giving or uh, freeing up radio spectrum for first responders. Where where does the administration stand on that? So uh, first responders can communicate amongst each other. When I'll have to take that question. Yeah, I just don't know. And then can you, I know you answered this, but can you clarify, did you say so no no visual evidence at all is going to be released, including video or anything of that? That's correct. Right. Okay. That's all I mean, right. a visual record of uh, Osama bin Laden's uh, death or, or his, his uh, deceased body. And then just, yeah. just one on a different topic, if you don't mind. Do we, do you, does the administration have any expectations, or what expectations, excuse me, does the administration have for the meeting tomorrow that Biden is hosting with his congressional leaders? Uh, look, I think uh, this is the beginning of an important process. The president, uh, by appointing a, the Simpson-Bowles Commission, by uh, putting forward the plan he did at uh, George Washington University for uh, his vision for reducing our deficit while in a balanced way, while investing in uh, the essential priorities of government to allow us to grow and allow uh, us to create jobs. Uh, he has he now taken this step to move this process forward because he believes that, uh, you know, we're at an important point here where um, Republicans and Democrats alike share, uh, recognize the problem, that's important, and they agree that it exists. They uh, share the same uh, end goal, which is four trillion dollars in deficit reduction, and they share the same general uh, idea of what the timeline should be, 10 to 12 years. Uh, this creates the potential for a bipartisan compromise uh, on, on some of this, at least. And, and that's what this process, we hope, will launch on Thursday. Uh, and so we, uh, I don't want to, I mean, there will be no uh, announcement after that meeting that a deal has been reached, because this is a process. But, uh, I, you know, we expect progress to be made. Yes, Karen. Um, I'm just wondering, just trying to get some clarity here. Why did the narrative released yesterday not mention the Laden's son? Was he killed in the raid? You're, I, I just, uh, you know, this is the, the, the kind of thing that I'm, I'm trying not to, to first of all, uh, go beyond what I said yesterday, and secondly, uh, to, uh, what, I, what I would just say is that for, for questions like that, I, I referred you to the Defense Department. and. Uh, 
uh, and and you, they may be able to have, get an answer for you. Because John Brennan on Monday gave one name. And okay, I, I think this has been made clear. This is an important point. The the the, the transcript he gave a name. It is the correct name. Unfortunately, when it, the the transcript was uh, listened to and put on paper, uh, an error was made in transcribing that name. Uh, 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 John Brennan's. Uh, we, I think we've corrected that, and, and, and what he said was accurate. And, and was any other person, dead or alive, taken from the compound and transported from the scene by no. U.S. personnel? Okay, and then on tomorrow, um, is there does the president have concern about possibly exploiting 9-11 families? Does he want to keep some of this private? What can we expect? He's meeting in private with 9-11 families. So, well, I mean, is there any, any in public? Private. Okay. So, no so press. Okay, so what are what are the public events then tomorrow? He's going to the World Trade Center site to, uh, and laying a wreath in public. I mean, that'll why be... Did, why did he decide to, to make these meetings all private? Well, I, I think you said so in your question. I mean, you suggested why that would be the case. It's about he wants uh, to meet with them and, and, and share with them uh, this important and significant moment, a bittersweet moment, I think, for many... Uh, for many families of, uh, of the victims, and, uh, and he thinks it's appropriate to do that in private. Yeah. Why did he want to invite President Bush, and what is lost by President Bush not being there? The President Obama wanted to invite and did invite President Bush because, uh, as he's made clear on Sunday night, and we've made clear, that this is a moment of, uh, of unity for Americans and, and uh, a moment to recall the unity that existed in this country in the wake of the attacks on 9-11, and uh, he wanted to, uh, he, he invited President Bush because he, he had hoped that if President Bush were able to come, that he would, he would join uh, the President in visiting the, 9, uh, the, the World Trade Center site. He, we completely understand that he's not able to come, uh, but that the, the invitation was uh, made in that spirit. And to follow on Ben's question earlier, when CIA Director Panetta spoke both to NBC and to lawmakers on the Hill, it was pretty clear that it was a question of when, not if, the photos would be released. So was he misinformed, or was he overruled? And what are the implications a decision, for him? A final decision had not been made. So he spoke out of, out of line, out of time? The, uh, the president made a decision. It was, there were obviously uh, arguments to be made on each side of this, and, and the, but the final decision was not made until today. So he was wrong? The final decision was not made until today. What time? This morning. I don't have a, I don't remember precisely. I didn't look at my watch. You were with him when he made the decision? Yes. Can I clarify just one thing? When you talked about the president's role uh, tomorrow in New York, are you ruling out that he'll make some comments, perhaps even in informal ones? There's no plan for him to speak uh, at the wreath laying ceremony. His events with the families and first responders are in private. I, I, you know, I don't. Uh, as was the case the other day when he didn't speak at the cabinet meeting, I obviously don't. Uh, uh, he's not a robot, and I, I, you know, he may, he, he, he could potentially speak at some point tomorrow, but, but there are no plans for that. Okay, thanks. Yes. Um, thanks, Jay. He, uh, has the president spoken to anyone on the team that carried out the mission? Uh, I don't have any information for you on that at this point. Do you know if anyone in the White House has, uh, Mr. Brennan? Uh, well, it depends. I mean, the team is a big, it's not just the, the, those uh, men who went into Pakistan. There's a obviously bigger network that's, uh, uh, that represents the team, uh, the operation team. And I, I just, uh, I'm not sure. I mean, there is the, the head of uh, special forces who uh, obviously um, has uh, spoken to uh, members of the administration. And he's very much part of the team. So I, I don't have any information about more contact. Yes. Um, the UN's top uh, human rights official said yesterday that uh, she hoped the administration would release full details about the operation in order to settle any questions about whether it was legally justifiable. Does the administration feel or have any plans that it, that it needs to say anything more about how the operation was carried out, the rules of engagement to justify the action that happened? On the well, let me, let, me, let me address that question, and I'll forgive me, I'm going to read so I'm very pre precise here. Uh, the team 
had the authority to kill Osama bin Laden unless he offered to surrender, <coughs> in which case the team was required to accept his surrender if the team could do so safely. The operation was conducted in a manner fully consistent with the laws of war. The operation was planned so that the team was prepared and had the means to take bin Laden into, cu into custody. Did, did anybody on the team see that? There is simply no question that this operation was lawful. Bin Laden was the head of Al Qaeda, the organization that conducted the attacks of September 11, 2001, and Al Qaeda and bin Laden himself had continued to plot attacks against the United States. We acted in the nation's self defense. The operation was conducted in a way designed to minimize and avoid altogether, if possible, civilian casualties. And if I might add, uh, that was done at great risk to Americans. Furthermore, consistent with the laws of war, bin Laden's surrender would have been accepted if feasible. That's my response, yes. Uh, two questions, thanks, Jay. Uh, one, um, what President Obama did on Sunday, he became a hero around the globe because it became a relief to the millions of people, including in India. India was the victim for the last 20 years of his terrorism. Also, um, my question is when President spoke with President Jazari, or what is the reaction from Pakistan uh, as far as and other leaders that he has spoken? Uh, what are they saying now inside Pakistan? Well, I think I don't want to speak for the Pakistani government, and I think in terms of our analysis of the reaction within Pakistan, I'd, I'd, I'd point you to the State Department. The President of Pakistan obviously wrote an op-ed uh, the other day. Uh, I think you can glean some information from that. And in terms of other leaders, uh, the, the President did speak with a number of leaders from around the world, and, and they all uh, congratulated the United States on, on uh, this accomplishment, uh, bringing to justice uh, Osama bin Laden. Uh, but I don't have any other characterization to give you. Why I ask that, that for the last 10 years, this is what I've been saying here in the White House and the State Department and Pentagon, that uh, Obama is living and protected by the Pakistani intelligence and the military and living like a Maharaja. Now you can see on Sunday what yourself, the whole world saw, how he, his lifestyle was there inside Pakistan. So don't you think now Pakistan has to, uh, so many questions have to answer to the international community and to the United States and also millions what, of people that he has killed? Uh, what John Brennan said and what I'll repeat is that we obviously uh, are interested in finding out uh, the details of the support network that obviously helped uh, Mr. Bin Laden uh, hide uh, in Abbottabad. Uh, we don't know the members of that support network. We also note that the Pakistani government has uh, launched an investigation of its own, and we think that's a good thing. And we will work uh, uh, to find out as much as we can about uh, how that happened. I would then further state that our relationship with Pakistan, while complicated, is very important, and it is very important uh, precisely because uh, of our need to continue the fight against al-Qaeda, to continue the fight against terrorists. The fight is not done, and uh, we look forward to cooperating with Pakistan in the future. As, uh, as others have said, more terrorists have been killed on Pakistani soil than probably any other country. And uh, the cooperation we've received from Pakistan has been uh, very useful in that regard. And second, if I may, uh, I think that's you. third, but okay. Uh, thank you, thank you. Uh, uh, what President said Sunday was good, that it, uh, war is not against Islam or for the Muslims, but my question is that uh, in order to bring Muslim community, including in the U.S., because they are saying that they are being targeted, and uh, Congressman John, uh, King's also hearings on Muslims, don't you think there is now time for President to speak uh, globally to the Muslim people that uh, what? I don't have any announcements for other speeches. I'll let the president's statement on Sunday stand for itself. Yes. How are you? Can you clarify, has the president indicated to you in any way that he wants you to stop giving out any clarifications or information? No. Or that he wants DOD to stop because you're directing us in that sphere? I, my point is simply, this is just to make the point that we've provided a great number of details. Uh, I don't have any new details for you to provide. Uh, and there are issues here. I mean, a lot of you people understand, a lot of the reporters here have covered and written about or, or uh, done pieces on uh, special operations and the kinds of uh, operations that we're talking about here. And there, there are equities we need to protect. 
in terms of, the, uh, you know, it would be uh, extremely foolhardy for us to divulge information in the recounting of what happened on Sunday that would in some way, in any way, limit our capacity to perform a similar operation in the future. Uh, we're not done uh, going after terrorists. Uh, would that we were, but we're not. And so are you, su wait, are, you suggesting, are you suggesting that to answer Tuck's question or any of these questions today would harm national security compared to the details that you're giving out for the last two days? Is I, that I think saying? that we have given out a great number of details. I don't have any more details for you. You're, you can certainly ask the Defense Department for more details, but I think the over the point here is that uh, We've divulged an extraordinary amount of information about this operation, and we don't want to divulge any information that would impede our capacity to launch a similar operation uh, in the future. And uh, I think that's entirely reasonable. I think, uh, again, the, the level of uh, detail and the amount of information has been rather extraordinary. Uh, and and there, there has to be, and we did. And there has so to can be. Can we keep doing that? Well, no. I mean, you can ask, but the point is, is that that I don't have any clarifications for you. I, that what I said yesterday stands, and and you know, I clarified uh, a couple of points. Uh, and uh, you know, the problem is, is that if we if we in, it's not me if we engage in uh, in this kind of thing, it leads to those areas that. Uh, unwittingly could have the divulsion of information that would limit our capacity to uh, do this kind of operation in the future, and that would be a, a grave error. Let me follow up on something that you said we might be able to get. On the Vincent, was there a pathologist who would have made a <coughs> record of the body? I don't have any. And, the, and would there have been I a, don't have any information a burial for you at sea? On that. There's always a written naval record of a burial at sea. Can we that get may be a possible, copy? but I'm not making that promise what I'm the point out the, the the question I was addressing the question the president addressed was photographs and video uh, you know in terms of and the and the decision not to release that is related to the image images and the the potential uh, harm that could cause by releasing those uh, of course I'll, uh, yeah and and I will ask but again there is no point in uh, you know, trying to tease out all these details about an operation that we've provided a great number of details on and which, uh, again, is uh, the kind of operation that uh, elements of which need to be protected for obvious reasons. Jay, can, yep. you, can you say with, um, with certainty that uh, Bin Laden's hideout would have been found without the enhanced interrogation techniques that were done under the Bush administration? I can say with certainty that no single piece of information, with the exception of the address of the compound, was vital uh, to this, was singularly vital to this, because we're talking about tiny bits of information that were compiled by unbelievably competent professionals over nine and a half years. And uh, it's impossible to know uh, if one piece of information came from one source uh, and was corroborated in another way if, uh, you know, which, which thread held the cloth together, with the exception of the location of the compound. And I would simply note that that has not been, only been in existence for five or six years. So, my, can I just finish answering his question? That'd be great. Um, the, uh, the fact is, is that information was uh, gathered from detainees. We have multiple ways of gathering information uh, from detainees, from different methods that we have of getting information. The, the work that was done that, it, that it, to put the case together was done primarily by analysts gathering tiny bits of information and putting it together and, and creating a body of work, if you will, that led to uh, the finding of the location where Osama bin Laden was hiding. Well, it sounds to me at the very least like you're, what you're saying is that the uh, interrogation techniques cannot be ruled out as a critical and necessary piece to have found bin Laden. Is that correct? It's possible I'm, I'm that I'm saying that, that there is no single piece of information uh, beyond the location of the compound where Osama bin Laden was hiding out that was incontrovertibly critical to the, the success of this operation on Sunday. Now, I can't categorically rule out that one piece of information, because we don't know, that you're, we're missing the sort of bigger picture here, which is that the incredibly hard and focused work of our intelligence committee, community, intelligence professionals who, who don't get credit because they're so often, you know, we can't name them and identify them and 
stand them up and, and, and celebrate them, uh, led to this success. Uh, and then joint intel IC uh, military cooperation <laughs> led to the remarkably successful mission on Sunday. Uh, and that, I think, is uh, a testament to the, um, the focused determination of the American people to do what we said we would do uh, after 9-11 and right up to Sunday, which is we were going to bring Osama bin Laden to justice. And we would keep looking for him, and we would find him and bring him to justice. And that's what we did. On yes, Christy. Point, you used, the president used that in the, in the transcript that you read from at the top of the briefing, uh, that Osama bin Laden, bin Laden had received justice. Is that what the SEALs went in to do, was deliver justice, or did they go in to take him into custody so he could be tried? I, I, I just went through a whole litany of, of what, their, what their assignment right, was. It, it involved... like an important message, though. I mean, this is yes, how we it's absolutely, being perceived around and, and the world. You can, and, and if he had surrendered and, and we could have uh, uh, done that, uh, brought him into custody safely, uh, uh, then that would have been bringing him to justice as well. But he was brought to justice on Sunday, and I don't think... Uh, uh, I think it's entirely appropriate that, given the circumstances that he uh, was brought to justice in the way he was, the, 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 the professionals on the ground made, uh, uh, you know, put themselves at great risk and, and accomplished their mission. Yes. Uh, you just said that uh, we are not done going after terrorists. Um, the Pakistani government said in a statement um, that Sunday's raid was an unauthorized unilateral action. So how does that statement how would that statement sort of affect any future special operations that might take place for another uh, person believed to be, you know, involved with Al Qaeda? I, we have a complicated but vital and important relationship with Pakistan. We don't agree on everything, but their cooperation has been essential in the fight against Al Qaeda. And we continue to work on that relationship and seek that cooperation and receive it. And uh, we will continue to seek and find and bring to justice uh, terrorists who are plotting to, to do harm to Americans and our allies. So would you use the same method, the same methods that we use on Sunday, even after? Uh, well, I, I, you're, you're, it's a hypothetical, but certainly that method uh, was very effective and, and, and was entirely lawful. And uh, uh, as I said before, I, I certainly wouldn't want to preclude the use of that method by, any, uh, uh, by anything I might say from here. Different subject, Jack. Yes, Giles. Uh, in his meeting with the Prince of Wales this afternoon, will the President express any interest in meeting uh, Prince William and Kate Middleton? on his visit to the UK later this month? I don't know. I, I honestly don't know. <laughs> uh, he might. I, I'm sure he will congratulate uh, uh, Prince Charles, but I, I, beyond that, I'm, I, I just can't predict. See you. So just for that question there, are you saying that the US reserves the right to, as the President said back in the campaign, if Pakistan will not act against terror suspects to go and infiltrate Pakistani territory and act against them? Yes. He made very clear during the campaign that that was his view. He was criticized for it. Uh, he maintained uh, that that was his view. And by the actions he has taken as president, uh, feels that uh, it was the, uh, the right approach and continues to feel that way. Why is the president concerned about incitement yeah, from the photographs if, indeed, uh, bin Laden was, in fact, the, the Charles Manson of the Muslim world? Do you paint him as not a Muslim? Do you describe him as an extremist? I say he wasn't a Muslim leader. And you, and you say, yet, the showing of his dead body will incite by... We have no fight. need to, 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 to publish those photographs to establish that Osama bin Laden was killed, and it is not, uh, in the president's view, uh, necessary or prudent to do that because of the possible uh, inflammatory nature of those photographs. There is a long leader. history of images like that being used uh, to um, rally opinion uh, against people to turn uh, uh, the, the people in those photographs into heroes. And, uh, you know, we're not interested in doing that. And we're also, as Americans, not interested, as the president said, 
in trotting around photographs as trophies. That's not who we are, and so we won't do it. Some Muslims have told me they would like to see the photographs. Well, that's not who we are. Because it would show the I think I've answered the question. Yes. Uh, regarding the historical agreement between Hamas and El Fatah today, in Egypt, in Egypt today, Prime Minister Netanyahu called this a blow, a, a blow to peace and great victory for terrorism. What's the President's view on this statement? Do you agree with Netanyahu? You know, we understand that Fatah and Hamas have reached a reconciliation agreement. Uh, what is important now is that Palestinians ensure implement implementation of that agreement, uh, that its implementation advances the prospects of peace rather than undermines those prospects. Uh, you know, we're continuing to seek details, more information about the nature of the agreement, and we're consulting with the parties uh, about these very issues. And uh, I refer you uh, to the Palestinians for details on the agreement because we're still seeking them ourselves. But many people think that without solving Palestine issue, Terrorist activities will not disappear in that region. Do you agree? We, we certainly agree that it's imperative for the parties involved to sit down and negotiate a lasting peace. And the president has made that clear, and he continues to believe that's necessary. Toshi. Thank you. Just another different topic on, on electronics company Sony. Sony's network was attacked by, by an authorized uh, outsiders, and uh, they were the more, more than one. All right, so they have officially switched gears, and we will as well here. Uh, welcome to CNN, uh, CNN Newsroom. Uh, I'm Brooke Baldwin. You've been listening to Jay Carney briefing members of the media for the better part of the last hour because of this big, big decision that we've just learned coming out of the White House just this afternoon. Uh, the headline here, they will not be releasing the photos showing Osama bin Laden dead, even though the public seems fairly anxious to see them. And even though Leon Panetta, head of the CIA, has said he believed one photo would be released at some point in time. We're going to replay just part of this. In case you missed it, you will hear from White House uh, Press Secretary Jay Carney. This is what he said just a short time ago. We discussed this internally. Keep in mind that we are absolutely certain that this was him. We've done DNA sampling and testing, and so there is no doubt that we killed Osama bin Laden. It is important for us to make sure that very graphic photos of somebody who was shot in the head are not floating around as an incitement to additional violence or as a propaganda tool. That's not who we are. We don't trot out this stuff as trophies. Now, Carney went on to quote the president as saying, there's no need to spike the football. That's not who we are. Before we get to some of our reporters, some pictures here from overseas. Take a look at this with me. This is from Pakistan. An American flag burned at a demonstration. This was Tuesday. Take a look at this. This is another image uh, from Pakistan. Massive demonstration there in support, in support of the dead bin Laden. Now, the reaction we have seen uh, thus far has been relatively muted, and U.S. officials apparently do not want things, uh, of course, getting out of hand, potentially endangering Americans both here at home and abroad. Dan Lothian is at the White House for me this afternoon. And, and Dan, you know, not in our national security interest, according to Carney, according to the president, you know, to make these photos public and, and quoting the president, this is not who we are. So, Dan, my question is, was there ever even a time when the president can considered releasing one of these photos? You know, that is such a good question. And in fact, Jay Carney was asked that at the briefing this afternoon, and he said from what he had seen, the president was pretty solid in his decision, at least as of yesterday. Uh, but formally making that call sometime this morning, Jay Carney saying that he was in the room. And again, at the uh, very foundation of this decision is this administration believing that it was not in the national security interest of this country for uh, these photos of Osama bin Laden dead to be released. There was a lot of pressure on this White House, and certainly as we've been reporting over the last few days, there's been this sort of internal deliberation as to whether or not uh, it should be done. And I asked Jay Carney if it was the majority opinion of those advising the president that the picture should not be released, and he said, yes, we do uh, know that uh, CIA Director Leon Panetta had been very public uh, about uh, suggesting that these pictures would ultimately be released. Uh, but again, most of those around the president advising him, according yeah. to Jay Carney, were telling him that these photos should not be released. Well, let me jump in because you mentioned uh, Panetta and sort of juxtaposing the news today versus what we heard from him uh, last night. It sort of it did indicate to the public that a picture would be released. Here's a portion. This is from Leon Panetta. 
Panetta just last night. I don't think there's there was any question that ultimately uh, a photograph uh, would be presented to to the public. Uh, obviously, I've seen those photographs. We've analyzed them, uh, and there's no question that it's Bin Laden. Were you debating um, uh, how uh, the release of a photo would go over, given its gruesomeness, versus the need? on behalf of people all over the world to demand proof of death? I think uh, there's no question that uh, there were concerns and, and there were questions that had to be debated about just exactly what kind of impact uh, would these photos have. But the bottom line is that, uh, you know, uh, we got bin Laden, and I think we have to reveal to the rest of the world the fact that we were able to get him and kill him. So, Dan, given what we just heard there, and I know that, you know, our team at the White House has been doing some reporting, and according to a senior Democratic source, you know, the president's inner circle this morning, none too pleased with Panetta's, and I'm quoting this, the source, I'm in charge here moments. So what can you add, Dan, about what happened last night and how that sort of evolved today? In, did Panetta change his mind? Well, it's unclear whether or not Panetta changed his mind. I mean, the president ultimately is the one who makes the call here, and as Jay Carney pointed out, the reason the president has his advisors around him is because he wants to hear from all of them. He doesn't just want everyone to jump on board with his decision. He will ultimately make that call, but he does want to hear dissenting opinions, if you will. Mm -hmm. But in the end, the president believed that this would not be in the best interest of this, country, of this country. And also, I should point out that while there have been a lot of reports out there about concerns that this may or may not be Osama bin Laden, we've seen that out on the internet. There have been people on the streets from our reporting, our reporters overseas there in Pakistan who don't believe that Osama bin Laden was killed by the United States. Uh, this White House did not believe uh, that that voice was very loud or compelling enough mm -hmm. uh, to where they needed to trot out this photo as evidence and also uh, there was this thinking that even if you put the evidence out there you show these photos that those who are doubters won't necessarily be convinced yeah president said don't need to trot out this stuff like trophies uh, Dan Lothian thank you so much for the quick reaction there uh, the big big decision from the White House and I want to move uh, from the White House to Capitol Hill because you know many many members of Congress are talking they're reacting this afternoon to this news that the president has decided not to release these pictures of a deceased uh, Osama bin Laden let's go to Dana Bash I know she and her team has been talking to all kinds of different uh, members of both the, the Senate and the House side and Dana just first quickly what is the reaction are most people in support of the president's decision well, first of all, it was very interesting. Leading up to this decision, Brooke, you mentioned that our team has been talking to members of Congress in both parties and both sides of the Capitol, and there was a real split about whether or not this was the right thing to do. Uh, and for those who uh, say that this obviously, uh, that they didn't want this to be released, obviously they're happy, but there was, there were several members of Congress, again in both parties, who said that they wanted these photos to be released. We talked to uh, one, Peter King, I got a statement from him. He is the Homeland Security Chairman, also a congressman from New York. He was one who said that they should be released. Here's what he's saying now, Brooke. He's saying, quote, I understand the president's decision and will not oppose it. While I have said that a photo release may be a good way to combat the predictable conspiracy theories about bin Laden's death, this is a decision for the president to make, and, re and I respect it as his decision. So there you have one side of this. But not everybody is reacting the way Peter King is. So just one example, Duncan Hunter, he is a congressman from California, is also somebody who served in the military tours in Afghanistan and Iraq. Here's what he told our congressional producer Deirdre Walsh. I'm not talking as a member of the Armed Services Committee as a Marine who did three tours because of 9-11. As Americans, we deserve to see them. So there you see uh, the split about whether or not the president made the right decision. Yeah, yeah and I think, Dan, also to underscore the point, from what I understand, you know, both you have two major Republican senators, Senator uh, Hatch and Senator McCain, both coming out to s saying, you know, look, we'll follow uh, whatever the president wants to decide. We'll support him 100 percent. So this tells me that this decision, this didn't fall on party lines. This was really just personal for these members of Congress. It, it was, and I will tell you that for the most part, uh, even those members of Congress, uh, senior members of Congress who said that they wanted these photos to be released or didn't, they ultimately said that they would support what the president did. Uh, but, you know, these photos are uh, floating around, if you will. We have talked to three United States senators who said that they have seen them. One is Senator Saxby Chambliss. He is the top Republican on the Intelligence Committee. He is somebody who actually said he wanted them to be released. We haven't heard from him yet about what he thinks about the president's decision, but he said of the photos, he said, you know, it's what you'd expect them to see, what you'd expect to see for somebody who was shot in the head. He said they're not pretty, but even so, what he said his concern was, and we heard this from others, Brooke, is that 
even if you don't release them formally, that they're going to get out. Those are just the times that we live in that they're going to get out, so why not do it in a formal way? And uh, that's what we heard from other uh, members of Congress, senators, actually two other senators, who said that they had seen these photographs. Dana Bash, live on Capitol Hill. Dana, what a day. Thank you so much. And I do want to take you quickly here, and let's just listen in for a moment. We have the President of the United States there speaking, uh, I believe, at the White House. This is all part of a, a he's speaking about a number of uh, troops who have been wounded. Let's take a listen. I was proud to kick off this soldier ride two years ago. I'm just as thrilled to be kicking it off today. Uh, I'm pleased that we're joined by a number of members of Congress here. The sun is coming out just as we start. Uh, we're also joined by the Vice Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff uh, and one of my top advisors uh, over the last several years. I couldn't be more grateful to him, uh, General Jim Haas Cartwright. Please give him a big round of applause. Now, this is one of the most inspiring events that we do at the White House. We're joined by folks from every service. We've got Army. We've got... We've got some Navy folks. We've got Air Force. You know we've got some Marines. And we've got some Coast Guard. And just as importantly, we are joined by those who serve and sacrifice alongside you, and that is all our outstanding military families. Now, uh, you've all got your gear on. You're on your bikes. You all look pretty sharp. Thank you. <laughs> You're ready to go. So, I, so I'm not going to hold you back too long here uh, with a long speech, but uh, it is important to remember what this day is about. Today's a reminder, as Michelle and Joe Biden have already said, that every American, Every single person in this country can do something to support our remarkable troops and their families. Everybody can do something. So seven years ago, a bartender from Long Island had the same idea. He wasn't from a military family. He had never served in the military, but he knew that he owed our military something. He's just an ordinary American who was grateful for the service of all those who wear the uniform. And he said, I just wanted to give something back. So he jumped on his bike and rode across the country over 5,000 miles to raise funds and awareness for our wounded warriors. Today, there are soldier rides all across America, giving our wounded warriors the confidence and support they need to recover. That's the difference a single person can make. Uh, today, we want to thank Chris Carney and everyone from the Wounded Warrior Project for reminding us of our obligations to each other as Americans. Give them a big round of applause. And today is also a tribute to all of you, a generation that has written your own extraordinary chapter in the American story. Our nation has been at war now for nearly 10 years. Tour after tour, year after year, you've done your duty. You've met every challenge, from the deserts of Iraq to the mountains of Afghanistan. You've risked everything, and you've carried in your hearts the memory of fallen heroes who gave everything. You've earned your place among the greatest generation of Americans. And we saw that again this past weekend when, thanks to the courage and precision of our forces, the terrorists who started this war and who took so many innocent lives learned that America does not forget. America will ensure that justice is done. Of course, for our riders here today, coming home from war marked the beginning of another battle, the battle to recover, to stand again, to walk again, to relearn, in some cases, the simple things that are the true pleasures of life, dancing with your spouse or holding your children. And in many ways, this might have been the toughest battle they've ever fought. But I want uh, all of you to know something. You inspire me. You inspire everybody here. Michelle and I treasure the moments that we've had with some of you and, and your families. Uh, Corporal uh, Nicholas Edinger is here. Where's Nicholas? Right there, right in the middle. 
He was one of our special guests when Michelle and I hosted a recent dinner for military leaders at the White House. Uh, he was serving in Afghanistan when, when an IED blast cost him one of his legs. But he's here today uh, as part of his journey uh, to recovery. And I'll, I want to just welcome Nicholas back. Uh, Private First Class Corey Kent. Where's Corey? Corey's right there. I met Corey during one of my visits to Walter Reed last year, and I, it was my honor to pin a Purple Heart on him. Uh, he's lost both legs, but he's working hard to recover, and he's here today ready to ride. So, Corey, you are an inspiration. Ted Wade is here. Ted, where are you? Right there. After sustaining multiple injuries in Iraq, Ted's doctors did not think he would survive, but he persevered. He pulled through. And I was honored that Ted and his wife, Sarah, joined us last year when I signed legislation for veterans and caregivers. I'm pleased that Ted and Sarah are back with us again today because I can report that starting next week, our veterans, wounded warriors, and caregivers can start applying for the support that you need and deserve. We are going to get this done, and we're very proud of that. As Sarah once said of Ted, just like he needed a team in the military to accomplish the mission, he needs a team at home for the longer war. And so I say to all of you today, we're going to keep building that team that you need for recovery. We're determined to take care of you as well as you've taken care of us. So to all the riders here today, I want to say as your commander in chief and as an American, thank you. We are grateful for you. You represent the very best in America. And in your fight to recover and in the ride that you're about to begin, we see the values and virtues that make our country great. We may take a hit. We may endure great loss. But we are a strong and resilient people. We push on. We persevere. We're confident in our cause. And we know that, like generations of Americans before us, we will emerge stronger than before. So God bless you. God bless the United States of America, and with that, let's get this thing started. I think I've got a horn. All right. Y'all ready? You look ready. One, two, three. a smiling President Obama. This is a fantastic project. This is all part of the Wounded Warrior Project. This is the fifth annual uh, soldier ride. You just saw them uh, leaving the White House. Uh, and essentially, this is an opportunity for the president really to pay tribute, of course, to our wounded warriors for the president. And, and uh, we as Americans, it's an opportunity for these guys and gals to get together, those who've been injured uh, during war, to be together and to show the rest of us uh, that they are doing well, they're recovering. And I tell you what, my hat is off to them. So that was fantastic to be able to share that picture with you there from the White House. What a day from the White House. Speaking of, stay with us because coming up next, I'm going to speak with a Democratic congressman, a Muslim, who disagrees with the president's decision not to release Osama bin Laden's picture. Here he is. He is standing by live on Capitol Hill. Hello to you, sir. We'll be speaking on the other side of this break. He'll tell me why. That's next. So, should the U.S. have released the bin Laden photos? Many in Congress disagree with President Obama's decision, including Congressman R.J. Carson. He's a Democrat from Indiana and he's also a Muslim. Uh, Congressman, why do you think the photo should have been released? Well, it's a very delicate thing. You know, I think uh, let me first commend and salute our, our president for his tremendous and bold leadership, as well as our military and the intelligence community. I think it's a, it's a delicate balancing act. On one end, releasing the photos will bring a great deal of closure, not only to Americans, but to folks worldwide uh, that uh, Osama bin Laden is dead. On the other hand, releasing the photo could exacerbate existing tensions that are already out there and inside 
invite others to uh, cause harm to Americans and folks worldwide. So he has to walk a tight rope. I respect him for his leadership. He's been very bold and we're very proud of him. But Congressman, your opinion specifically, I was told that you said that the president should have released the photos. Is that correct? And if so, why? I said the president certainly has a right to release the photos, uh, but it is an executive decision. Uh, I trust his leadership. I trust his judgment. If he doesn't want to release the photos, then that's fine. But again, it could brace, uh, bring a great deal of closure to those folks uh, who need closure and to those of us who um, uh, have bought into the mythology of Osama bin Laden. He has certainly, certainly posed a threat. But on the other end, it could exacerbate uh, uh, tensions and hostilities and increase the levels of rhetoric anti American rhetoric across the globe. Have you had a chance to speak with any other Muslim Americans? Do they agree with the president's decision or do they sort of seek a sense of closure as well? I think I think, you know, uh, the Muslims that I have spoken to, um, the, the feeling is mixed. Some would love for the photos to be released uh, as it relates to closure, and others uh, don't think it's necessary because they, too, are concerned about the extremist elements that are out there and those elements who claim to represent Islam. Okay. Congressman Andre Carson, thank you so much. I appreciate it. And, you know, thank President you. Obama's decision, a bit of a shock to some in his inner circle. So who was it who helped persuade the president, if it anyone at all? And, and could today's decision not to share these photos could it change? We're back in 70 seconds with more. our breaking story today, the fact that the president has decided not to share photos of a dead Osama bin Laden. I want to bring in our senior political uh, analyst, Gloria Borger. Gloria, you have all kinds of fantastic sources I know you've been working with here in Washington. <laughs> and, and you got a hint of this news yesterday. What were you I told? Did. I did. You know, um, I was speaking with a senior White House official, and it was very clear to me this senior official was completely opposed to the releasing uh, of any of these photographs. He said to me, look, and I'm, this is a quote, we've got the DNA, the facials, the wife, and measurements. There's no real issue that he didn't get killed. And then he went on to say, so what's the point, really, of releasing this? He started talking about how we live in a reality TV world, world right. right? And he said, um, if the point is just to have some shock value here, why do it? Then he also went on to say that, you know, wasn't the president alone making this decision, that it would really be decided also with his national security team. That means the secretary of defense, the national security advisor, mm -hmm. and the secretary of state. So I, I could see the way this, this was sort of trending, although, of course, you couldn't be sure because it's the president of the United States uh, who makes the final call on right. this. But right. uh, to hear that yesterday was kind of interesting. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, when we heard uh, from Jay Carney, he said, you know, yes, that there was mm -hmm. a pro-con discussion that was had within the administration. Sure. I think you mentioned some of the individuals. I think, you know, the picture that we saw uh, from Sunday in the Situation Room, members of his cabinet, I imagine those were some of the folks who he would have consulted. Do we have any idea if there was any one right. particular voice who he listened to more than another? No, I, you know, it, it, it's interesting. I think the, this is a president who listens to a lot of people and then goes home at night and decides and tells you what, he's, what he's thinking. I, I think the, the arguments that were being made that were the really important arguments were obviously the doubters out there. Do you have to, you know, you went to all the trouble of not dropping a, a bomb from a drone on this. You've got all this evidence. Um, and let the doubters understand that Osama bin Laden is dead. Hmm. Uh, on the other hand, also, there's a question of is, and I think Dana Bash mentioned this earlier, is if this leaks somehow, don't forget people have been shown these photographs, did someone take a picture of them, who knows, you really want to be able to control this story. You don't want this story, the, the, the photographs to come out and then you have to kind of catch up with it. So it was an issue of you know, can we actually control this? Um, and then well, perhaps well, the White House, I think, has another way. Maybe they're going to release some DNA evidence. I mean, hmm. you know, you don't have to actually look at the photographs to know that this is Osama bin Laden. Yeah, but you and I aren't, you know, biologists. And if somebody shows me a piece of DNA and says, this is Osama bin Laden's <laughs> DNA, you know, but right. if you show me a well, picture, that's two different, uh, two different issues. 
That's a, but, but don't forget, we, we live in an age in which pictures can be altered, right? Of course. Any, of course. Anybody can Photoshop any. So you could you could show the picture of Osama bin Laden, and then someone could say, well, that's obviously Photoshopped. What, that's what about clearly this? not Osama bin Laden, right? What about this, Gloria? And tell me if there's anything to, to read into this. The whole, the Leon Panetta angle, we heard from him last night. I'm quoting, this is when he was on with Brian Williams. Yeah. NBC Nightly says, I don't think there was any question that ultimately a photograph would have been presented to uh, the public. Mm. You know, keep in mind, he may be the CIA a chief now but you know pending Senate confirmation he's going to be the head of the the DOD so is right. there anything to read that, that he's on one side and the president falls well, on quite the other could be I honestly don't know definitively but you'd have to say from listening to that that he might have been on the other side I just don't know hmm. um, the key word there is ultimately that at some point the photograph would be released uh, it's part of an historical record one would presume hmm. So uh, I don't know that somewhere down the road, uh, when it's less uh, likely to inflame the uh, some people, perhaps that it under might a different administration. We who knows? Or yeah. We we just don't know. I, don't. At this point, it's it's very hard to say. But it's very clear where this president comes down on it. He thought that it would clearly be gloating. He used the word trophy. Uh, as you pointed out, and um, that's not who he is, yeah. and it's not what he said we want to be. He was the one who made the call, and he made the call. Gloria Borger, you thank you as always. Thanks. The CIA, uh, Justice, other intelligence agencies, other law enforcement agencies are all contributing people um, and machines to go through that material. So was Osama bin Laden planning attacks from that big massive compound? Time is critical as investigators are parsing through, translating what they're, what they're getting from these hard drives and the DVDs and the computers that all those Navy SEALs found. And we're also getting hints and the information is very, very significant. Back in 70 seconds with that. turn now to this apparent treasure trove of evidence seized during the raid that killed Osama bin Laden. These computer files and thumb drives and other data appear to be yielding useful information right now. At least that's what we gleaned from this exchange today involving Homeland Security Secretary Janet Napolitano and Senator Joe Lieberman. Take a look at this. I presume that, uh, for instance, uh, we know that the Navy SEALs took out of that uh, bin Laden compound in Pakistan a, an enormous amount of uh, uh, data and uh, computer systems and the rest. I, I, I assume that uh, as this material has gone over, anything related to Homeland Security uh, will be shared immediately with your department. It is being shared. It is being shared already? Yes. Yeah. Okay, great. It is being shared. That's the significant piece there. Gene Meserve there in Washington, Homeland Security correspondent. Gene, do we know where this material, uh, A, is being analyzed, and B, talk to me more about the sense of urgency here. Well, they're really being aggressive in this initial analysis, which is being contributed to by different law enforcement and intelligence agencies across government, all of them bringing what resources they can to this uh, matter, which really has considerable urgency. Listen, if there's anything in this material about impending plots, they want to disrupt them. If there are names in there, they want to roll those people up. The attorney general was asked about the material today up on Capitol Hill. Here's a bit of what he had to say. The uh, material that was seized from that residence is being reviewed by an interagency team, uh, CIA, uh, Justice, other intelligence agencies, other law enforcement agencies are all contributing people um, and machines to go through that material. Uh, as we glean information from that material, we will make uh, appropriate decisions with regard to who might be added to the terrorist watch list, uh, the no-fly list, all those things. Um, you expect you probably will add people as a result of what you found? Uh, my guess would be that we probably will. Okay. I've asked officials throughout government whether or not they have found any specific threat information in here. They say at this point in time, no. They still have not found anything that indicates any specific threat to the U.S. or U.S. interests overseas. Brooke. Okay, but back to the treasure trove. You know, we, we heard Senator Feinstein say the information appears to be substantial. Your sources, Gene, say it's valuable. I mean, those are still fairly uh, nebulous adjectives. Do we, do we know specifics? Do we know anything beyond that? 
Well, my source told me, let me quote here, the sense is at this point that the collection will yield valuable intelligence on al-Qaeda and its plans and intentions. We would expect to have insight into at least some of the relationships inside al-Qaeda. But officials are not going beyond that, Brooke. Here's why. They don't want to compromise this intelligence. They want to use it. That <laughs> makes you. sense. Gene Meserve, thank you very much. And now you watch this. Our focus still has to be a government in Afghanistan that does not host al-Qaeda and that is not defeated by the Taliban. Afghanistan does not carry a strategic value that justifies 100,000 American troops and a $100 billion per year cost. Those are just some, some of the views on Capitol Hill. So what do you think? Should the U.S. maintain its presence in Afghanistan now that Osama bin Laden is dead? We're going to tackle that topic in depth next with retired Army Brigadier General Mark Kimmett. The White House suggesting that if the U.S. had released the pictures of Osama bin Laden's body, it could inflame terrorists and hurt American troops overseas. I want to bring in retired Army uh, Brigadier General Mark Kemet. And General, first, just reacting here to the news this afternoon, what do you make of uh, the president's decision? Do you support it? Well, I do. I mean, frankly, Osama bin Laden for years and years has been making videos. If he's still alive, you can be assured that he's making another video right now. Uh, if he's dead, there's no reason to appear triumphalist or uh, sensationalist. All it's going to do is harm our already dicey relationship in the Middle East. In this case, I think the president made the right decision. Can you just be more specific there, you know, as a former assistant secretary of state and also just a retired army, uh, from a true perspective on the ground in Afghanistan, had this picture been released, what could have happened? What sort of violence could we have seen? Well, uh, again, I think we need to be concerned in the wake of Osama bin Laden's killings that al-Qaeda itself is going to have to try, try to prove its legitimacy, try to demonstrate that it's still a viable organization. Hmm. Uh, we have to be prepared. Our military facilities, our diplomatic facilities, our travelers overseas have to be aware that the risk in the near term uh, is probably higher. I think if we would have released the photos we might have seen a situation not unlike the Prophet Muhammad cartoons, where that incites the population and incites the population to take retribution and revenge. I want to ask you about our mission in Afghanistan and the, the beginning of the drawdown come uh, July. But first, Pakistan. You know, we know that the mission uh, Sunday was strictly unilateral. It was U.S., it was American commandos going in, going out, and killing uh, bin Laden. There are now all kinds of questions on Capitol Hill as to, you know, over the ISI, over if we should continue funding, you know, all the appropriations, billions to, to Pakistan. Um, where do you stand on that? Because some people say, hey, we should pull out. Done. Well, aside from the issue of whether Pakistan had in, any involvement in harboring and providing safe haven for Osama, uh, the fact remains that we are in Pakistan, we are in the region, we have a strategic national interest in maintaining a relationship with the government of Pakistan. Uh, we do not want that government to be taken over by uh, extremist elements. This is a nuclear-armed country. As President Carter said this morning, they have over 100 nukes. Uh, we don't want to see those nuclear weapons fall into the hands of radical extremists. Mm -hmm. We're in there. Uh, it remains a safe haven and sanctuary for terrorism. We need to be working with the government of Pakistan. As the White House said yesterday, and I agree with this, uh, their security is our security, and this is no time for us to be pulling out of that relationship. What about next door? What about Afghanistan? You know, with, with bin Laden's death, you know, the pressure will be mounting at the Pentagon starting in, in July that they should be pulling out uh, our men and women. Do you agree that there should be this, you know, fast, massive troop withdrawal or, or not? Uh, I don't disagree with the notion that over time, when the Afghans themselves are capable of taking on the responsibilities, we should hand that over and withdraw. My argument is not necessarily should we withdraw, but it's the rate of withdrawal. It should not be time focused. It should be conditions focused. When the Afghans are ready to take on the responsibilities themselves, we ought to hand them over as quickly as they can handle them. But this notion that somehow the justification for the war in Afghanistan was Osama, Osama is dead, now we can walk away, declare victory and get out. 
that is a very short-sighted decision, and it's a short-sighted opinion. That mistake was made in the wake of the Soviet withdrawal, and we're back in, in many ways, to Afghanistan because of those, that lack of support that we gave Afghanistan in the early 80s. Yeah, I think I read somewhere one official was saying, look, we've, we've run the ball so far, but we cannot yet just walk off the field. Uh, retired Brigadier General Mark Kim, and I wish I had more time with you, but I do not. Thank you so much, sir. Appreciate your perspective. And uh, coming up here, we're going to check in with... Nick Robertson, who is on the ground in Abdaban, Pakistan, to find out what he's learning in and around that compound. Stay here.